So welcome back to the Kelly Wright Show. My next guest is a man that I have so much respect and admiration for. I met him through a mutual friend of ours. His name is Jose Flores. Uh, he's originally from New York City, living in sunny Florida right now. And Jose, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, it's an honor and I'm and a privilege to hang out with you, man. I, I really, uh, last time we saw each other was a little while ago. So it's always fun hanging out with you, man. Yeah, I think the last time we saw each other was in Tampa, Florida, and you were speaking, if I'm not mistaken, and did an excellent job. Uh, Jose, tell us about your life and how you uh, made this journey into not only being a, a minister of the gospel, but also an incredible inspirational, motivational speaker, and you work with the likes of Les Brown and uh, Willie Jolly, of course, who's a good friend of mine as well, and tell us how you got here. Yeah, man. First of all, those are some great individuals such as yourself, man. For I'm just so honored to be able to know you guys, you know. And, um, you know, like you said, I was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, and I had a great childhood, you know, great family. Um, but I was born with a neuromuscular condition called spinal muscular atrophy. And what that does is basically the older I get, the weaker my muscles get. And uh, the doctor said that by the age of 15, I'd be in a wheelchair and they weren't even expecting me to live past my teenage years. And, uh, you know, so it was pretty tough, but I have good news for everybody uh, because this year, uh, just back in February on the 25th, I celebrated my 43rd birthday, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happy and so, birthday, you know, man. You defied all the odds. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, and, but it was tough growing up, you know, especially in New York, you're growing up and you have this condition that's inside of you. It isn't really prevalent yet, but you know, it's there. And, you know, at some point it's going to kick in. And so for me, that was in high school. It kicked in when I was like a junior, senior in high school. And, you know, how we all know how high school is, is really, you know, that's when you're trying to like find out what you want to do with yourself, where you want to become, you're trying to fit in. And so that was a difficult period of my time, uh, you know, growing up. But then I graduated high school. Uh, moved to Florida, where, where I am now, and I love it down here. But I always thought that I would never be able to do anything great in life because of this condition that I was born with. I felt like it was holding me back. I felt insignificant, incapable, and inadequate. And it wasn't until I came to Florida and I started uh, just working a regular desk job, customer service, because I thought that was all I'd be capable of doing, you know, put a laptop on my lap, have a mouse, and it was minimal movement, you know, with my body getting weak. And so I did that for the, the, a, a good amount of time, about 20 years. I, I was in corporate America for 20 years. And then just recently in um, 2018, yeah, in 2018, uh, the company that I was with for about seven years, they were doing some layoffs and they laid me off. Um, but by that point already, um, Kelly, I was already speaking. I had already found another calling for myself because uh, I, I kind of felt like I, was, I wasn't being utilized or I wasn't functioning to my full capacity um, doing customer service. There was nothing wrong with it. I, I liked it. I enjoyed interacting with people, but I always felt something inside like there was more that I could be doing with myself and there was more for me out there. And that's when I started, you know, because many years of my life, I was focusing on all the things I couldn't do. You know, I can't lift my hands above my head. I can't walk. I can't stand. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I was stuck in that can't do mentality. And it wasn't until I said, okay, Jose, well, what can you do? Stop the pity party. What can you do with yourself? And I said, you know what? I still have a sound mind and I still have a voice that I can use. And uh, so I started looking into motivational speaking. And that's when I came across, you know, the Willie Jolly and the Les Browns and the Eric Thomases and Tony Robbins and John Maxwell's and Jim Rowan and all, and all these wonderful individuals. And I, I really just became a student of the craft man and just started studying their, their stage presence, studying their humor, studying their tonality and things like that. And I said, man, if these guys can do it, you know, they all had great stories. And I said, man, I can do it too, man. I, I have a great story and I can do it too. And, and that was the, that started the journey of me being a, a full-time entrepreneur now and just speaking and traveling the world and impacting and inspiring, you know, everyone I come in contact with. An incredible story. And the story just gets better and better. Uh, how has it been? And you know what? Let me save that for the right after the break. I want to talk to you more about how this COVID-19 global pandemic uh, may or may not be affecting your business. I know it's not affecting your spirit. We can see how, how uh, inspirational you are and motivational you are and so encouraging. And that's why I wanted people to meet you 
on this program at such a time like this. People like you, my friend, are called to carry us through and, and be that light in our darkness. Don't go anywhere, everybody. He's going to come back with more. I'm going to have more of Jose Flores right after the break. Welcome back. So joining me again is Jose Flores. And uh, he, Jose, your, your life story is just uh, so impactful. And I was talking about COVID-19 uh, before we went to the break. What kind of effect has this global pandemic had on your profession uh, and, and, and even your lifestyle right now? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, I mean, I think this is having an effect on everyone, right? Uh, right. But for me in particular, you know, being, you know, speaking in, uh, in large conferences and seminars and then also speaking for corporations and different companies and nonprofits, uh, a lot of the events that I had coming up are canceled. Uh, so I've been affected that way. Um, but, you know, th they're hoping and praying that things will get back on track and they'll be able to bring me back in, which is the, is the good part of the scenario. Right. But in the meantime, while, while those gigs and events have been canceled, I've just been trying to think outside the box on how I can add, continue to add value to, to my clients and to everyone really who follows me on social media. I've been, re, you know, I've been really using this time to connect and stay connected with some of my uh, old clients and just send them emails, make some phone calls and just see how everyone is doing. I'm offering a free 30 minute session. Um, and I'm gonna be going over how to stay focused during the frustration. Yeah, Jose, I appreciate you so much. And and sharing uh, your insights and your inspiration with all of us. And, and certainly uh, there are people in some dire straits. Uh, some are obviously in ICU and we've got people on the front lines uh, who are dealing with the COVID-19 uh, crisis and they're risking their lives every day. And uh, just a word of encouragement from you is, is so refreshing and that's why I wanted you on because you were a man who thought at one point you were not going to even get married and have children. Uh, right. And even that changed in your life. You have a lovely wife, uh, your, your family, and to those families who feel like they're at wit's end because of this COVID-19 and they might be in fear, they might be in dread, what's your advice to them? You know, my, my main slogan, and I do this at all my events, and I have shirts and things that say it, and, it, and it says, I won't stop until I win, right? So right now, the whole world, the whole planet is going through a battle, and you have to just develop that mindset that says, no matter what, I'm not going to stop until I win. Because, you know, as we know, the good word says, this too shall pass. You know, storms come, but they don't come to stay. They come to pass. So um, just develop that mental toughness, that mental resilience that says, I won't stop until I win. I'm going to keep pushing through. I'm not going to stop. And eventually this is going to pass. And then the sun is going to rise up again and light will be bright and things will get back to normal, hopefully for many of you that are out there. But if you're going through a struggle and you're going through a tough time right now, I know a lot of people have lost their jobs. Hours have been cut. You know, companies are closing. And I just want to let you know, man, don't let your struggle become your standard raise the bar and overcome the, the, the normal that's going on right now. Overcome that. There's a lot of things I like to say, Kelly. There's a lot of things that we can't control in life. You know, I can't control this condition that's living inside of me. I can't control the process and the course that it has to take. But what I can't control is my outlook and I can control my actions. I can control my behavior. I can control what I think. I can control what I speak, speak and I can control my attitude, man. That's why when you see me, man, I'm always lit up. Even when I feel down and out, I'm like this because I know you know, what smiling and what laughing does to the body and what having a positive attitude, right? PMA, positive mental atti attitude does to the body. That's why they tell cancer patients, you know, to be positive, to smile, to laugh, because it helps kill the condition that they're dealing with. And so you guys that are out there that you're struggling or feeling something, smile, laugh with your family, smile about life, be grateful for life, because what you're doing is you're killing the current condition. All right. Got mad love for you, man. Thanks for being on the program. Got to have you back as often as you'd like to be here. Uh, my best to you and your lovely family. And I uh, appreciate all of you guys. The, the, it's just, a, just an incredible story. Uh, I just love what God's doing in your life. And thanks for being part of the Kelly Wright Show. My good friend, Jose Flores, everybody. And we'll be having him back 
a lot more. I'm back with my final word right after this.